Hello, I'm Matt James, a graduate student and archaeologist at the University of Maine's Northeastern Prehistory Lab. My focus within the field of archaeology and the focus of this video is on Wabanaki ceramics, made between about 3,000 and 300 years before present. Archaeologists as a whole study basically everything that humans made or interacted with in the past, and we each individually specialize in the study of specific concepts, artifacts, and or groups of people. Many of the archaeological sites in Maine are shell middens and seasonal habitation sites. Middens are locations where large amounts of clam, oyster, and mussel shells were deposited by the indigenous peoples of the area. Within these refuse piles, we can also find many other artifacts, including the remains of other animals and the tools with which they were caught, butchered, and cooked. Projects at our lab primarily focus on these types of remains, artifacts, and sites, and some of my other colleagues work with dog remains, fish and shellfish, and the now extinct sea mink. Other archaeologists at UMaine also work abroad in places such as Peru and Croatia. During my undergraduate program at the University of Maine, I was fortunate enough to participate in field schools outside of the United States and study other aspects of archaeology. This included the excavation of mummies in Peru and the excavation of ancient hominids in South Africa. There are so many interesting things to do in our field that it can take a while to really know exactly what you might want to specialize in. I didn't know that I would be focusing on pottery until Dr. Bonnie Newsom and I collaborated on a research project where we found tiny impressions of balsam fir needles within broken pieces or sherds of pottery. So how do we study these ceramics? Primarily by examining the stylistic choices made during its manufacture. This includes things like the size and curve of the lip and rim, the thickness of the walls, the color of the clay, and the designs impressed along its exterior. With the help of microscopes, magnifying glasses, and digital cameras, we're able to zoom in and analyze minute details. Of course, this is after the artifacts have already been excavated, bagged, tagged, and cataloged. I know this doesn't exactly look like much, but most of the pottery we uncover has been broken up into small pieces over the hundreds or thousands of years that it's been underground, allowing us to really catch a glimpse of the details that lie inside each individual sherd. While I don't recommend or encourage smashing pottery, it can be useful to work with the small fragments. In fact, the impression of balsam fir needles left inside the shirts we discovered would not have been visible if the pottery was fully intact. One of the main goals of our analysis is to group each shirt into vessels. If we're lucky, we can start reassembling the shirts into a pot, like a 3D puzzle. Although we're rarely able to find all of the missing pieces. Much like starting on the corners and sides of a normal puzzle, we usually begin grouping our sherds from the rim. This part of the pottery is often uniform and well decorated, and is therefore much easier to analyze. Now that I've talked a bit about the basics, let's analyze a piece of pottery together. There are many qualitative and quantitative categories within the analysis of a single artifact. From just visually examining a sherd, we can learn a lot about when and how it was made. Let's look at this rim shirt. Perhaps the most easily recognizable details are the designs on the exterior. These punctates, or holes drilled partway into the clay, are apparent just two centimeters below the lip. Being a part of a much larger puzzle, we can see a second shirt attached to the bottom of the rim. This was reassembled by a previous archaeologist using a little bit of glue. Impressions were left all over the exterior surface of this pot. Some incisions are made by a row of animal teeth, or a small piece of rope pressed into the clay. Looking at the profile of the sherd, we can see that its rim curves slightly outward, and ends in a flattened point. The undesigned parts of the surface appear to be smooth flat, likely with the manufacturer's hand. On some sherds, we actually find the fingerprints of the manufacturer. This sherd is made up of a very fine consistency clay, with grit dispersed throughout it. Grit is one of the major tempers added to the clay to improve the quality and durability of the finished pot, and is primarily made out of crushed rock, feldspar, mica, and quartz. Crushed shell, discarded and crushed ceramics, or plant material are also frequently used in pots from the area. Approximately 2% of the clay is made up of grit in this particular sherd. We also collect measurements of each dimension and the spacing of the designs. Using all of this data, we can determine approximately when the pot was manufactured. In Maine, we categorized ceramics into one of seven time periods, known as ceramic periods. 
This shirt is from ceramic period 4 and was likely manufactured sometime between 1,350 and 950 years before present. In 2018, Dr. Newsom and I discovered that alongside the normal grit and shell tempers, we were also finding small impressions of individual balsam fir needles throughout certain pots. The fine consistency of the clay made it extremely well suited to capturing the details of the needle, which subsequently eroded away or burned away. Analyzing thousands of sherds, we found many instances of exposed imprints. Using microscopes, macrophotography, and samples of various pine, spruce, and fir needles, we determined that balsam fir was the likely culprit. The inclusion of these needles is important to archaeological research in Maine because we previously only believed that grit and shell were used in ceramics. Unfortunately, a limited amount of research has been done on ceramics in the area, but plenty of research has been done on other aspects of archaeological and material culture. Additionally, much research has been done on the ecology, the plants and wildlife, of the foggy Maine coast, where many of these artifacts are from. Many of these shirts were excavated nearly a decade prior to our analysis. It can take quite a long time to sift through the immense amount of materials that are sometimes recovered from a site. For those of you watching that are looking to pursue a career in archaeology, I recommend experimenting with all the different aspects of the field that you can. There's generally a backlog of artifacts to analyze, and here at the lab, there are plenty of opportunities to study indigenous and historic artifacts of all types. For me, ceramics are some of the most interesting. There are just so many details preserved within them. It's especially exciting to find sherds and pots that break the norm, or have special characteristics such as fingerprints. I hope that you found this topic just as interesting as I did, and thank you for watching.